of CO2. Which do you think is cheaper? This is way cheaper. Way cheaper. For 25%, that's, that's, in some buildings, that's just changing the light bulbs. But if you just change the light bulbs in a building that's leaking, um, leaking air, it's probably not going to be enough. Here's another interesting study. This was done by McKinsey, a well-respected economics research uh, firm. Uh, this has caused a little bit of controversy. Here, they not only figured strategies for sustainability, they added in the real cost in dirhams or dollars, and they added in the, CO, the amount of uh, CO2 emissions that would take to implement the strategy. Um, so they made a real net-net comparison of different strategies. Uh, why I mention that, I mean, if you know the top 10 countries with the largest um, environmental footprint, UAE is up there, Qatar is up there, but so is Norway. Why? Because Norway didn't have, they have wonderful hydroelectric plants, but they didn't have the resources within the country to build those plants, the steel and the, the massive concrete, and, the, and they're building these things in the fjords. A lot of energy was spent in building the facilities for them. Anyway, this, this chart at, at a zero line balancing out, it compares those, those, those strategies which, uh, which are very effective to those strategies that cost money, right, uh, more money right from a median point in the center. This strategy here is building shell improvement costs for commercial and residential buildings. It is 10 times more efficient to invest your money in improving your building envelope than it is to spend it on making your air conditioning system more efficient. This, I mean, spending the money on a uh, high-speed variable drive pump, energy recovery wheels, this is all great, but if you build the building in a smart, airtight, well-insulated, passive design method in the first place, you wouldn't need to do that. And again, 10 times more effective. That's right. This is why I say building envelope integrity is the lowest cost path to sustainability. And like I said, I would have said in my video there, it's lowest cost because you've already paid for it. Get what you pay for. Nobody buys the leaky building, all right? So no one, and builders don't build them, owners don't, want, don't think they're getting a leaky building. Air tightness testing is one of the methods to make sure that you're getting what you're paid for. Okay, let's see what next. Okay, now, this is, the, this is a, I think, a, a very important highlight for this uh, eco-construct uh, seminar today. Um, the, uh, the UAE is taking the lead in beginning to look at how important air tightness testing is uh, in, and building integrity. This, this is uh, an excerpt from the Department of Municipal, Municipal Affairs of Abu Dhabi. It's an it's a excerpt from their, from their new code, which is actually an addition to the International Building Code in the, in the uh, energy conservation uh, section of that, which is going to make it mandatory for air tightness testing. And this is going to be enacted, according to the National, February of 2014, and according to, to my inside sources as well. All the developers are talking about that. That's Abu Dhabi. Dubai. Dubai also launched in 2010 green building regulations, which, are not, which right now are in effect for government buildings, but they will be mandatory as of January 1st, and there's an air tightness standard for buildings over a certain size in Dubai. And as uh, mentioned in the intro, I'm, I'm involved with the first air tightness test for a large building in Dubai. Now this one's in meters cubed per hour. The other one was in liters per second. I hate these terms. This is only for engineers and people who want to talk like engineers. It's how do we visualize what this means? Well, one, uh, this is an air loss. This is really talking about a volume 
and a flow. A certain size over a certain time, that's a flow, divided by the area at a certain pressure. But let's, let's see if we can break it down. GBSI has put together this kind of Rosetta Stone of local and international codes. Um, here you see Estadama, Abu Dhabi, the Dubai regulations I've just been talking about. MASDAR, the most stringent relation, uh, um, regulation in the area. I've converted it first to meters cubed from liters, the liters per second, meters cubed is just a math formula. But then converted them all, some of them are at 75 pascals. A pascal is a measure of pressure. About four or five pascals is standard pressure. So this is 50 is 10 times that. 75 is 15 times that. This is, these are pressure, these are standards you, pre, you test the building at. And here's something that's a little more relatable. Air changes per hour. Basically, you have spent the money to fill this building with cool air. If your building envelope has a hole in it, sometimes it's exfiltrating, sometimes it's infiltrating. Uh, when the air conditioning's on and it's positive pressure, it's exfiltrating, you are basically increasing the number of air changes per hour. Okay, and you can see the range here. The Abu Dhabi codes are closing in between seven and eight, all right, uh, in Dubai. Here's some European standards. I've included the French standard, which is very interesting because it is at normal pressure, but this uh, GBSI has been uh, uh, advising the consultants who are rewriting the building code in Qatar after that tragic uh, mall fire last year. They hired some consultants to redo their building code, and air tightness testing will be in the Qatar building code. And right now, it's going to be based on the French standard. So it's changed the air change per hour. That's a little more credible. OK. <clears throat> now, let's go right into the main thing. Air tightness saves energy. Who says so? This is the first thing everyone asks me. How, is it, Mr. Whistler, is it going to save energy? Is it worth doing a test? How much money will I save? And the answer, of course, is it depends. But here's, here's what I usually, how I usually answer this question. This is a 15-city well, study by the U.S. Army, pretty big organization, and they did it in a sort of scientific way. They picked one building type. They didn't compare an airplane hangar to a hospital. They took a barrack, which in any army is the same all over the world, and they tested these barracks for air tightness in 15 different cities, okay? And then they repaired, they wrote that down, then they repaired the air tightness. Here's the good news about air tightness rectification. It's pretty low labor, low cost materials. It's caulking, it's insulation, it's uh, new gaskets. This is not, going back to my friends, the mechanical engineers, is not putting in an energy recovery wheel when you don't have one. So, they found but just a 50% improvement on average. If they could cut down the air loss by 50%, which means they probably reduced a hole about this big to this big, which isn't hard, they save 25% energy. You try it at home. If you think the air is going out underneath the threshold of your door, plug it up. See what happens to your uh, energy bill. These, are, by the way, are all uh, infrared thermographs of air leakage from various, every slide that you see, every infrared image you see is from the GCC. These are all jobs that uh, GBSI has worked on. Great tool. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Okay, but here's 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 my new example to talk about energy savings through air tightness. This is a warehouse, a warehouse built by uh, with a special material called ICF. Who knows what ICF is? All right. Well, ICF, in its simplest form, is you take rigid foam, insulating foam, you tie those together with nylon. Uh, ties, the foam becomes the formwork to pour concrete. It's very strong, relatively light, and very, very, very uh, insulated. Very good U factor. Okay? Uh, I, CF, three letters. It stands for insulated concrete foam. This is my friend Abu 
Abdul Malik, whose company, Royal City Construction, who just happened to show up here today, uh, built this. I'll tell you more why this is. Uh, if you want a building like this after you hear this, go see Abdul. All right, this is the warehouse in the Dubai airport free zone. All right, this is a 20, over, a, it's slightly bigger than 20,000 square feet. Okay, 2,000 square meters of warehouse. The standard, uh, when the building was being designed, mechanical engineer pulled out the rule of thumb for, for uh, air conditioning design for this 2,000 square meter warehouse and said, you're going to need 200 tons of air conditioning. All right? Rule of thumb. If you don't agree. But you're not a mechanical engineer, right? No. <laughs> Sounds like a lot to me too. Anyway, this is what they. This is how they would do it, because the theory had been, you're going to design the building, put a lot of air conditioning in, run it positive all the time, because energy is cheap. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore. Anyway, my friend uh, Abdul did a very brave thing. He said to the builder, "You don't need 200 tons. You don't need 20 10-ton units. I will build this building with five 10-ton units, under 50 tons of air conditioning." Or, and if it doesn't work, I will pay for the new units. That's, to me, uh, that's, that's put quite a lot on the line. So they did that. And it's been up since 2010 now, all right? I'm going to show you. i keep pointing this over here. Uh, this is basically, it's a warehouse, very simple. This is a three-dimensional diagram of it that, to do an air tightness test, you have to calculate a three-dimensional diagram uh, of the cubic volume and surface area. But let's look at the, let's look at some real costs here. This is a projection about the cost, building it, uh, especially the energy costs. All right? Um, yeah. Concerning the air conditioning system. First of all, you didn't buy 15 10-ton units. That saved 600,000 dirhams. You're not maintaining 15 extra 10-ton units. That saved 76,000 uh, uh, dirhams for the year. And then the energy savings, they, for a building this size, this is what the DWA bill would be. This is what they projected the bill to be. So that's another 650,000 dirhams in savings. So the first year is 1.3 million dirhams in savings. And of course, year after year, the savings for the maintenance you're not doing and the energy savings are um, continued. So I've, there's been lots of buildings that have made great projections about their energy savings. Uh, there's a lot of five, uh, uh, there's a lot of lead platinum buildings that have great energy projection. Let's see what, how they did. These are the real bills from, from DWA. These are the real bills. They, they projected 16,000 on average. This is actually just over 11, 11,300 per month. All right? So they did better than their projection and uh, their energy cost is this, if it was at the 70 times 12, I can't, I can't do that one. Let's just say, let's, let's say the comparable warehouse costs 50,000 a month. That would have been 600,000 in DWA bills. This is 136. Basically, if you compare it to 70, this is over 70% savings. I just, I can't believe it, even when I say those words. Over 76% of savings in electric costs. So yes, now, why is that so? because of the building envelope. It's well insulated and it's very airtight. This was a dramatic video which you can look up on YouTube uh, where we did the test and basically with the new Dubai standard which is 10 cubic meters per hour, I was showing the actual meters, you'll see them in, in the one video I have, uh, it shows this thing is around two cubic meters per hour per meter squared or five times better than the Dubai standard. So it's insulated and airtight, and it's saving a lot of money. So, yes, airtightness is, is absolutely contributed to saving energy. I want to talk about something that isn't talked about so much, 